Hello, today I thought I'd take a look at these Holbein Artist Squash, which I showed you in a recent art haul. I got the set of 18 5mm tubes, and I'm just going to start off by swatching them out. So I've drawn out a chart with the paint name, pigment information, transparency rating, and light fast rating. I had a quick look online about the Holbein Gouache light fast rating system, and I couldn't find very much. The highest number of stars is four in this set, with a couple having no stars at all. But I did find online some photos of somebody who had done an eight month window test with these paints. And so as we go along, I'll just note in the video which paints underwent noticeable differences over that time scale. I'll paint straight out of the tube on the left hand side, and then I'll mix with some white gouache paint on the right hand side because I like to see what pastel colours can be achieved on my swatch sheets as well for gouache. So I've got this tube of permanent white, which I bought a while back, that I'll be mixing from. And I'm using a Rosemary & Co number no. 4 Ivory Short Flat. I'm just using this tear-off paper palette to squeeze the paints out onto and mix on. The paint straight out of the tube is very thick and creamy and in a few of the swatches you can see that the paint's almost too thick and I have to add a bit of water just to get the first box painted. The paints mix beautifully with the white. I then realised that I'd forgot to put a black line down in order to see how opaque the paint is. So for the further paints, I add a Sharpie line on each box. Here's an example of where the paint's too thick to be able to spread across the paper without the addition of a little bit of water. I try and use gouache paint as dry as possible, just so that it keeps its maximum opacity. Though I did find that by the end of swatching these out, I was really impressed with just how pigmented the paints are. And I found that I could add quite a bit of water and get a really nice, easy to paint with consistency without affecting the opacity of the paints too much. The paints do have their own separate opacity ratings and I found that these were quite accurate. So for example, this orange that I'm painting with now is a semi-transparent and you can see the line showing up much more than the semi-opaque red above. The white in the set is classed as semi-opaque and so when it's mixed with other colours it does help to improve their opacity if they're semi-transparent ones. You can see in the painting I do at the end that the lighter colours do have really good coverage of the darker colours when they're mixed with the white. I should also mention that the brilliant orange I swatched above is one of the three colours in this set which showed some fading over an eight month window test. It had a small to medium amount of fading. Holbein have given it a one star light fast rating and the paints with two stars and above seem to have held up okay. I'm afraid I can't reference who did this test because it was just a one off picture that I saw somewhere saying that it was an eight month window test. The other two paints in this set which were affected over that time period were the violet and the magenta, both of which had faded drastically and are fugitive. There are 89 colours in this range altogether. I saw a photo of 84 of them swatched out. Most of the paints looked fine after eight months, with just a handful of the pinks and purples fading a lot. I know that's not particularly scientific or accurate, but it does give you a rough idea. Just to show you my paper palette with the paint squeezed out. I'm afraid I forgot to move my pad up for the bottom three paints on the left hand side, but I'll show them at the end.
also here I just went back and drew a black line with Sharpie on the carmine so I could do the opacity test on that too. And they're not all dry but here they are close up. I showed a book called Plants for Free by Sharon Amos in my last video, an art haul video. And I bought it because I liked the simplified plant drawings and I thought that they'd lend themselves well to gouache painting. So here I'm just copying one of the pictures out of that book to try out the paints. I think the painting of these leaves demonstrates quite well the properties that I like about these holbines. I've watered the paint down quite a bit to be able to get it thin enough to do the fine details of the tips. And yet the paint is still really rich and creamy and pigmented and covers the paper beautifully. You can see here as well when I'm adding in the lighter colour, it covers the darker green really well, but is still fluid enough to be able to do fine details. That's one of the main properties that I like in gouache paint. So that was just a simple quick painting so I could give the paints a try out. And I'm really happy with how they work, I'm really pleased with them. I've only used Winsor & Newton designers gouache paint before and this isn't a proper comparison video but off the top of my head I'd say that the Holbein gouache are equally as nice as the Winsor & Newtons, if not a bit more pigmented and creamy. I really felt like I could relax while painting with these and not worry about streaks or anything when I added more water. I got this set for £23 from Jackson's Art in their Black Friday sale and I'll put links to everything that I used down below in the description box. In this video I haven't talked about what gouache is or its particular properties but I do do another video which I'll link to which covers more of the basics of gouache. I hope this was interesting to see anyway. And thank you for watching as always. Bye.